So a few weeks ago, I finished my Ryzen 3900X Linux video editing workstation with 10 gig networking. Uh, but I wanted to first talk about the layout of this. That's why I'm in a weird position, so to speak. Um, I have a triple screen set up. And one of the things you're gonna see when I launch some of this, I've condensed most things down to one screen, but a few things do launch on the other and I drag them over. Uh, but I've been really impressed with this system. So let's get into and talk about, you know, what how this all works and real quickly i'll leave a link to this video but if you don't want to watch it that's fine i will just run down the parts list real quick here so the uh, ryzen 3900x of course uh, the ballistics 32 gig of 3200 megahertz cdr4 the cooler master hyper 212 evo cooler which despite uh what someone had said the evo will not tame that 3900x actually uh, works perfectly fine uh so to uh, DJV Incon, uh, sorry, you are wrong. It works perfectly fine. <laughs> um, I'm not, I have no regrets about these uh, hardware choices. Yes, I did go with the Gigabyte X470 Oros Ultra Gaming, not the 570. So no, I don't have the full PCI uh, E4.0, which just wasn't a concern for me. Um, I saved some money doing that because this board was on sale. Anyways, uh, Western Digital Black, 500 gig MVME, and that pretty much concludes it with the one thing that a couple people have mentioned. I do have this Asus, and I've had this for a while, uh, XGC100C 10 gig networking that is plugged into the uh, Ubiquiti Networks US 16XG. Now, a few people have commented saying that it uh, throttles on them, it overheats, and I don't know if that's a Windows problem, but I have not experienced it in Linux. And what I was doing even before we started recording here is uh, here is 3.8 and my computer is 3.9. So we're going to go ahead and uh, iperf and show the connection speed to it. So it's been, uh, let me show scroll back. I've been running it over and over again just to try to get it. And of course the computer's been on, I've been editing and still recording and uh, doing everything across this 10 gig connection. It, it's not throttling. Uh, it seems to be pretty consistent at the full 10 gig speed without a problem. So I, I'm gonna do maybe some tests later to see just how warm it gets, because I do know some of the 10 gig cards do have larger heat sinks or fans on them. Uh, but for daily usage, even peaking it out with iPerf, it seems to work perfectly fine. I haven't had an issue with it. So I get that out of the way. Now, as far as actual workload on this, a lot of my times I'm in Caden Live, but I thought I'd show something else that's pretty novel. Uh, I also do, because this is my workstation I do everything on, uh, I have VirtualBox, which I have pulled up over here, and I usually control it from one screen and then launch it over here. So we're gonna launch Windows 10. And I've opened up a few things, so it's not cached or anything like that. Uh, this is to show how fast Windows 10 in a virtual environment boots right up uh, with this MVME drive. Is I could give you some benchmarks and talk about, you know, what exact speed it gets. But this is impressive when you look at it and say, all right, it's not just about speed, it's this. Now, I do know Windows does this, and I think it's because I have a remote session that waits. It doesn't let me type right away. I don't know why, but it did that before I upgraded as well. It, it thinks before it lets me put my pin in. But it's responsive. Like it can do and switch other users, like this user, but it won't let me type the pin in. I don't know, that's kind of puzzling. The keyboard's working because I could use the keyboard. But you can get an idea just how fast Windows, uh, oh, I just apparently decided to load an update, which is, <laughs> you know, this is why I don't run Windows. I keep Windows in its own little virtual environment. So you can, we'll keep this going in real time as it should be. Almost there. Thanks, Windows, whatever you're doing. Uh, no, skip for now, whatever these things are. There we go, now we're in the desktop. We'll switch to the other user now. Actually, we'll just restart it so it... Uh, yeah, someone else needs to create a restart anyways. Go Windows Go. And you wonder why I run Linux. <laughs> So I'll let this reboot in real time here. Uh, but all of my editing workflow we're gonna get into next, uh, that works really well. I don't use Windows for anything other than usually in testing of things, seeing if they work. Um, and sometimes I have to do some troubleshooting for a client, so I'll take a snapshot of it and run it inside of here. Oh, now it's logging me right in this time with this user. Yeah, whatever, you get the idea of how quick it can log in versus the user, the other user I have set up on here. And Windows is as responsive as Windows is. I can open a browser, surf the web, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it all just works. So that is one impressive feature. Let's talk about my actual video editing workflow, but uh, we'll open up Caden Live for that, which by the way, we can launch that even while we're waiting for Windows to do whatever Windows is doing. 
So this is open now. Now all of my files reside on the free NAS that are uh, connected via 10 gig through the Unify switch. And I've talked about some of my setup in the back before. So let's open up a video here and there, we just loaded that project. Uh, it's only 12 minutes of video and I only record at 1080, 30 frames a second. So the files are not, you know, massive uh, files, but you get the idea here. It loads like really, really fast. And I've had no problem cutting, trimming, removing things uh, through the video and doing the editing. It's pretty immediate with this. So we'll go ahead and we'll jump to something new. We'll pull in, instead of that, we'll pull another project in. Uh, let's see if we pull this up. Here's that video with the VLANs. Here is the workflow. If you're curious how it works, we record it in the studio computer. It gets dumped to the free NAS, and then I access the free NAS uh, from my computer to pull in the different clips of the editing. So here's the HA follow up video. Pull that one in, and we'll pull in the other one here. We'll drag this on there. You can see it just flows like we're not waiting for anything on this. And yes, you can do. My channel is pretty much all edited on Linux. I think of the 840 something videos I have uploaded, uh, only a couple of them were done without Linux. Uh, maybe pretty much everything was done. I was used, I tested a couple of other tools trying to do something, and I don't actually I don't know that I even left any of those videos up that I was doing for testing. Uh, but my production videos were all done with Caden Live. About 90% of them I was using OpenShot, and I went back to Caden because Caden Live was really crashy. Tried OpenShot move back to Caden Live for my workflow. Love it. Um, I probably should do some more tutorials on it because I want more people uh, using it. I've donated to Code Sprints with them. It's it's just a great product. And it's so easy Like to, a lot of my editing flow is mostly this. I look for dead spots going, I must have been umming or not talking here. So let's uh, cut that out, slide that over. Um, we don't want the beginning of this one. So we can whoop, change back and trim this. Trim that one out, but you gotta get the idea. So there's 10 minutes of video here, so reduce it a little bit. And so there's eight minutes of video. Let's say we wanted to render this. We're gonna hit render. Uh, we'll choose MP4, the preferred format for YouTube. And we'll just call this, let's add some letters after it. Render to file. And we'll actually do it like this. We'll pull up HTOP, give you an idea. So it's getting started here, pinning up all the cores, spinning them all up and it's gonna take just a few minutes to edit out this video. Uh, looks like it's gonna take about what, less than, it'll, it actually starts out with a high number and then quickly reduces once it kind of gets the calculation for just how fast it's gonna render. But a uh, 10 minute video seems to take me about three minutes, four minutes to render for every 10 minutes of video, depending if I've applied any extra effects to it. Uh, but the workstation is impressively fast. Now, another workload that I do on here for uh, content creation, I have a podcast, the Sunday Morning Linux Review. So we'll close this here. And let's pull up the Sunday Morning Linux Review. So go to here to home, uh, SMLR, the last episode, which I know is about an hour and 15 minutes long. We're gonna open up Audacity. Now Audacity opens really fast, but it pauses on the logo. Um, other than that, yes, it launches really fast. So there's Audacity. Pull in the raw file, and it gives me a little warning. Do you want to read the raw file? Absolutely. So there's an hour of audio. Whoops. We'll hit a control A effect, and the two things we like to do is we're going to uh, normalize it. So we're going to normalize the audio. So that's going to take me uh, lapse time five seconds. All right, so we normalize an hour of audio in five seconds, and then we'll go ahead and effect, and let's uh, compressor. Hour of audio compressed, and it's gonna take about 25 seconds to get that done. And by the way, the computer is completely responsive while I'm doing this. So that's, you know, uh, running the audio compressor here. We're still recording. Matter of fact, I'm also loading up the computer because we're running OBS, which is, you know, utilizing the screen to record on this. So, you know, everything's going really smooth. It's not like laggy or anything like that. And here we go, we have this done. And then finally, I always do my thumbnails in GIMP. So we'll go ahead and open up GIMP. All right, we got GIMP opened up. Let's open up uh, a file to edit here. And once again, you know, this is how I do my thumbnails. Uh, 
it, GIMP just works. It's so fast. Of course, you know, video editing versus graphics editing, completely uh, different when, you know, you compare it to, it doesn't take much power, com relatively speaking, uh, but no problem moving things around. And in case you're wondering how I get things in here in my workflow, this is something that a few people don't know about, but if you typed in like Apple logo, then we go to an image search, tools, uh, transparent. I can take a transparent uh, background and then, well, something that has a transparent background, then it's an edit. Uh, paste as new layer. And we'll go ahead and resize it real quick. And you get the idea. Now I've, you know, quickly added in another logo or however you want, and then you just control the layers on there and make it look all cool. Uh, but, you know, I just wanted to follow up to say that, one, the system works wonderful after a few weeks. Two, I've had no problems running it on. Uh, pull up the About page, show you real quick. The Pop OS in 1904 with the uh, kernel 5 point. Uh, what is exact kernel on this one? It's 5 point. Let's say uh, you name... Dash A, we are at kernel 5.0025 generic Ubuntu SNMP kernel uh, with the G4760. Now, I know the video card is a weak point, but it doesn't really matter to me because nothing I'm doing uh, other than driving these three monitors and recording stuff, it's nothing GPU intensive. I don't see any screen tearing. Editing your videos is no problem. I don't have uh, any lag issues or anything that makes me think I need a newer video card. And Caden Live has limited uh gpu support so it's not like i'm really too worried about the gpu processing power um it's not something that it seems to be a big priority in terms of uh caden lies development process in doing that so if they ever get to where they need gpu and i need a faster one hey i'll buy it but for now it just it would make no difference on my editing uh at all they do have some ways you can apply some effects with the gpu but it's a very beta feature and i found it to be very crashy so i kind of skipped out on it because stability matters a lot i hate you know you get a bunch of work uh started and you hate that it crashes so you save a lot and you don't want it to mess up um and i kind of comment on this because i was talking to uh, one of my friends who does edit on windows another youtube friend and they are complaining about how many crashes adobe has and it's actually over the years caden live went from a system that crashed a lot to the last you know year has been amazing uh, we've watched the steady development of it and it just does not crash near as much as it As a matter of fact it hardly ever crashes um, there's only a few edge cases that are repeatable where there's a scenario i can do if i slice it a certain way it might crash but it's not a way that i normally do so i just don't do it that way you slice from the top instead of from the bottom it was like a weird uh flip problem i guess you could say you always slice from the top and it doesn't crash slice from the bottom and it may give an error <laughs> so um those little workarounds have been pretty minor, but as far as uh, content creation and everything else, as you may have noticed, the last couple of weeks I've been busy cr cranking out some videos, and uh, this system has been rendering all of them and just been trouble-free and not noisy, despite what people said about that uh, Evo 212. Um, my computer is about two feet between the microphone and the computer, so you're not hearing it now. Even when I render something that's pretty big, like a longer production or a lot of videos, it hasn't been an issue. It, you hear the fan spin up a little bit, but not enough that it would actually disturb me. Uh, but all the parts I listed, obviously, are 100% compatible with uh, Pop! OS. I mentioned that in my other build video. Uh, but by in turn, they're also compatible with Ubuntu. So because Pop! OS is built on Ubuntu, and it's a lot more than a facelift. That's one of the reasons I keep using Pop! OS. I've been really happy with it. It's been great for the little niceties that they add on to the interface. And uh, with this latest one with new GNOME and everything else, uh, sliding things around, it feels a lot more, not just because of Horizon, but with when I went to the 19 version, uh, I'm going to say it feels a lot more responsive, a lot more uh, snappy, because I ran the Ryzen for a little while with the 18, uh, version 18 long-term support version before I moved to 19. Uh, I just want to try it out, make sure when any stability problems, you don't want to change too many things at once, because what I did was clone this, so I didn't have to reset anything back up. I just cloned my SSD to the MVME, um, and then my friend helped me expand. You can expand an LVM encrypted drive on the fly to the larger size uh, don't ask me how do some googling or ask my friend <laughs> maybe he'll help you too um, 
But uh, Jay from uh, Learn Linux TV, he's probably, I don't know if he has any LVM tutorials, but uh, he actually helped me figure out what I was doing wrong when I was trying to expand the LVM myself, and it just failed. As I made some mistakes along the way, sometimes you forget a command line switch or two. Uh, but nonetheless, a little Google Foo and a little bit of Jay's help, and I got the whole drive expanded, So uh, and everything's working great. But that's what this follow-up video is, just to say that, yes, it all works. No, it's not too noisy. Uh, these parts seem to work really, really well together. So if you're looking for a Linux compatible system, uh, desktop to build, this is great. I'm not much of a gamer, so I can't really speak to any gaming performance on it, but I know that graphics card would be a killer hang up if I were a gamer. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.